Well, anyway, like I was saying, one have everything in its own individual tracks around here. All right. Right now, you don't hear anything, but I do assure you that I do have a beat. You see how what I did was that I got each instrument in its own individual track. Um, then from there I am able to do the levels, the panning. Um, over here on this side I can have all of my uh, effects, my reverb, my phaser, or whatever else that I want. A compressor or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this really quick in front of you guys. Just so that you guys can see it I guess live or whatever basically um now there's a everyone has a theory on how you should mix some people say that you should always mix from the kick from the snare for the vocals i have no vocals so um excuse me for yawning i'm pretty tired um so the way that i mix is that i mix the most important melody what's most important of the song alright now I think the kicks and the snares and the hi-hats I think that's important so I think I'm gonna use that as my foundation but as soon as I'm done with that I want the most important elements to sit exactly where I want and everything else to complement that so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now I don't know if you can see it or not but I got this big old meter right here um, for post mastering um, you should know that you know this is in decibels and whatnot, and you really don't want to get close to 12, negative 12, because you got to leave some headroom for compression at the end. You know when you're when you're doing after you're done your mixing, you want to get into your mastering and then your post mastering. Um, so you want to be able to leave some headroom so that the engineer or yourself or what, you know whoever has has enough to play because if everything is so super loud then you get to mastering and they can't do anything to it they can't make it go uh, you know more quiet they can make it go louder and clearer but I don't you know from my understanding they it's really hard for them to attenuate everything so uh, here we go really quick um, I'm gonna go ahead with my kick first now see that kick is already hidden past negative six but you know I really do want it to hit it hard but I really don't want it to get to that height. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put up my volume, but I'm gonna keep this one down so that it can get around that negative 12 mark. And I really don't want it to pass that. This over here is my spectrum analyzer. It allows me to see. Oh, you can't see it. There it is right there. That's my spectrum analyzer. That allows me to see what the kick is doing and what frequency. So I'm going to leave it on the side. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little compression on it. I'm going to come over here, go to my compressor. Free compressor right there. So I'm going to label it compression. Compressor. I'm going to select my kick and I'm going to make it go up. See, that's kind of boxy. I don't want it that box. I just want it to hit. So, right about there. Alright. Now I'm going to go ahead with the complement with the clap. I mean with the snare.
right now I'm EQing. See, if I make everything flat, you can't hear it. So, I want to clear out the, the, you know, anything under 100, I want to clear out that so I can have my bass come out. I really don't want that high sound, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that. See that boxy sound right there? I don't like that boxy sound, so I'm going to... I'm going to cut that out. Right about 400. Alright. My hi-hat. I want it to live up there. My snare. I like that snap. 